Hey guys, welcome back to the shack. Been outside today getting things done that I've been putting off due to the weather. Uh, got my trailer lights working the way that they're supposed to, best I can tell. So as the sun sets this afternoon, I'll be inside the shop here. Uh, I've come up with a, a project and a little bit of an idea to, uh, to come up with another build that I can add to my portfolio, some things that I can sell around town and uh, all that. So I thought I'd come out here and uh, share this with you and kind of walk you through the steps that I'm going to use to make these things. And uh, maybe it might be something that you could do yourself. Many of you may actually have tools that will make this job a little easier than what I have. But I think it's going to be a pretty cool uh, little creation and something that you can use scrap wood to make. So if that's something that interests you, stick around for a few minutes. We'll be right back. All right, just to give you the backstory on how this started, uh, during the, the holiday, uh, during Christmas, I went with my brother and uh, we were at a family gathering. And while the food was being served, uh, there was a piece of wood that is apparently called a counter saver. I uh, didn't know this was a thing. Uh, I apologize to the ladies out there, but I, I'm learning this stuff as I go. But all of a sudden, uh, there's this little piece of wood that gets placed on the kitchen table or on the dining room table and the pots and pans are set on it. Well, there was a shortage of them. And during the commotion of trying to find another one, it, the, it hit me, the idea hit me. And, I, and, and it was like me and Bull saw, we both thought the same thing at the same time is, we can make those. Uh, and so that's what I'm gonna do today is I saw the, the objective of what this thing's supposed to do. And basically it's just a small piece of wood, uh, round or square. I don't guess it really matters. Uh, that's personal preference, whether you wanna do them round or whether you wanna do a square. But it's basically, you just set it, you set it down almost like a cutting board, but you set it down to set pots and pans on. Uh, and you put you some little anti-skid, you know, stickers on the bottom of it to keep it from skidding. And voila, uh, looked like a good place to engrave. You could come up with some designs. To, to make it decorative, and uh, but it's a no-brainer. It's just small blocks of wood, guys. So that's what we're gonna do today is I've got a couple pieces of wood. I'm gonna grab that out and I'm gonna try to make, uh, I think I'm gonna do a square one and a round one and just kind of throw those out there and see how they look. All right, so here's the piece of wood I'm gonna be using. This is just a piece of oak that I milled. Uh, it's pretty slick on this side. The other side still got a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of roughness to it, but not enough for this project that's going to be an issue. So I'm going to flip this guy over. And the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a square one. And these things range in size. So I just want to make sure how wide my, my piece of material is. So I'm about nine and a half almost wide. So I think what I'm going to do, this side it has already been trued up and smooth cut, but this side has not. So I'm going to go with a nine by nine. Uh, that'll give me a little bit of material to be able to take off to get this thing uh, smoothed up on that side. All right, guys, so I got it. There we go. A nine by nine square piece of wood, okay? I don't want this thing to be too plain. Uh, it is going to be a decorative piece. So before we go over to the engraver, the one thing that I do want to do is I'm going to put it on the router table, and I'm going to put me a little uh, router to edge around here just to, to kind of give it a little decoration. All right, a couple of minutes on the router, and I've got me a nice little rounded edge with the top little tray part here uh so guys we're like halfway to the build all right i'm gonna be using something special for my round one and uh I'm, well, what i'm gonna do is i got my little circle tool here so a little laser cut tool that i that i used to make circles with uh this one's gonna be a little harder to uh to do because it's gonna be round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one here and I'm gonna go ahead and set this. I think I can use my, no, I'm not gonna be able to use 10. I'm gonna go with nine inches and I'm gonna set my little, this is a basically just a circle making tool that I come up with. And uh, it just takes a thumbtack and a pencil. And I'm gonna make me an eight inch circle all the way around this guy. so that I have a uh, circle. And there we go. 
So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take the chop saw, I'm gonna cut this out so that I can move it over to the band saw and do the actual cut with. All right, so I got the, uh, what it is, I just basically just took some of the material off, made this thing a little easier to maneuver in the band saw. And I think no steeper of an angle than this is, I think I'll be able to use the resaw blade on the uh, band without having to change it out. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do here. Well, <laughs> circles aren't exactly my gift, uh, but I got this mostly the way it needs to be here. Uh, you guys that have a CNC, you could cut this out relatively easy with a CNC router, or you could use a regular router with a right shot a bit, but this is, uh, this is one inch thick oak, so it's not something you can cut with a laser. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this over here on the router table. I'm gonna try to clean this up just a little bit and uh, put an edge on it. All right guys, now you know why I bought a laser. Uh, I'm terrible at making perfect circles with any of these other saws. I uh, got it really close. Uh, once I get through sanding this, I think I'll be fine, but it is definitely not perfect. Uh, but the cool thing is, is this is just more or less a prototype. I just want to see it, test the theory and see how it works out. So I'm going to sand this down and try to get it as round as I can and uh, move on from there. All right, guys, I still can't make circles. Uh, I got it close. It looks okay. We're just going to call it rustic. Uh, I found that if you mess up on something, just call it rustic, people love it. Uh, so the square one, it turned out really nice. Uh, I think I'm going to give this one to my wife. The uh, round one, I've come up with a design and uh, just going to put the, the design on it. I'm making it for, for a specific person and uh, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, it is going to be rustic though. Let's remember that keyword, rustic. Uh, but I've got it over in the 20 watt doing a little bit of engraving. Uh, try to get a deep engrave, just add a little color to this thing. I want it to be decorative and I want it to be kind of like a centerpiece, uh, so to speak. Even though it's not perfectly round, next time I might take a little more time, maybe even use a scroll saw, even though it's a little slower, to, or either just stay away from circles. I hate circles, so I may just stay away from circles. All right, guys, and just so you know, uh, with this being a, near, uh, a square shape, all I'm going to do on these is I am marking the center of my workspace. Uh, and in this situation, it's eight and a half. So I'm gonna mark it at four and a quarter, it's just like you do with, any, with, with anything. You wanna make sure you know where the center is. Uh, and doing it again here at four and a quarter. Then I'm gonna make sure I put me a little crosshair right there where those two measurements intersect. Now, <clears throat> once you mark the center, uh, you're going to do the design part of this. You're going to make sure that you, you set your machine up to run from current position. Uh, the only other thing to consider with a square is you need to make sure that you have it square with the machine. And I use my square and jig for that. Uh, with a round one, a round shape, it really doesn't matter as long as you're in the center because you can, you can turn that any direction. But with the square ones, you do want to make sure that you have this square with the chassis of the laser so that your text is not running up or downhill. All right, guys, even though the, uh, the circle isn't exactly perfect, which, uh, like I said, I, I, could, I could probably slow down and take my time and do a little better job, but hey, it turned right. out. As you can see, I got a little bit of, a little bit of soot because I run air assist because I wanted that thing to be in there. I wanted it engraved. I did not want it to look like it was painted. I wanted it to be obvious it was engraved. Uh, and I got that, one, got that one engraved, so I'm gonna take it over to the sander and sand it up before we finish up here but I've got the square one that I want to do as well. So while I got the camera there, I'm just going to show you uh, setting this guy up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little square and jig there, snap that guy in. Uh, because this thing is, I, I don't know how close to the edge I'm going to get. I'm just going to go ahead and set it in here like so for now. Uh, if I get too close to the edge here, uh, what I do a lot of times is I'll put me a little spacer back there if needed, but I think I got plenty of room uh, to do what I'm going to do to this one. So I'm just going to run just a square and jig without any kind of other spacers or anything. I've got a piece of, piece of, uh, there we go. Little tiny pieces get down in that honeycomb and we'll give you fits. There we go. Now she sits flat. All right, but I've got that in there. I did mark the center of the board. This is the same thickness material as what I just took out of there, so I'm not gonna have to focus it. 
I'm just gonna move that uh, crosshair over and put it on my center mark. That way, once I get my design laid out, I can update my camera overlay, make sure everything fits, run it with a square, and go. All right, guys, I got the uh, square one set up, and I've got it running. I'm doing a pencil line right now. Basically, what I did is once I built the shape, I went in and used the uh, create a line outside function over the left side, offset, and uh, basically I replicated a line. I went out 0.75 millimeters and 0.50 millimeters and replicated that line. And what I, the reason I did that is so I'd have it, basically it's running two passes, but it's not running in the same cut. So it'll make a, a heavier line to give me a little bit of a dimension to the design. Uh, and I'll let you see what the end result looks like when I get done. But I've got it right now doing that heavy line uh, for the engrave, and then it's gonna go back and, and do the engrave. But this is gonna take a few minutes. I think it said it's gonna take about 15 minutes I am running flood fill to uh, avoid some time on this thing. So uh, hopefully it'll be done soon. I'll show you what it looks like. All right guys, the square one's done. Uh, the one thing that I did notice with this one that I didn't have an issue with with the other one, for some reason, I'm guessing it's because of the direction that I went with the grain on the burn, uh, the flood fill did kind of leave some little small lines, uh, which may not be as visible once I blow the uh, dust out of it and everything, but there's running flood fill for some reason I wound up getting some little small lines in there. And not crazy about those, but I'm hoping that once I blow the soot off of this thing, those lines will kind of go away. Because I, I didn't notice them on the other one, but I did notice them on this one for, for some reason. Uh, but I did run flood fill, and that might not have been a wise choice on my part. All right, after looking closely, uh, there are a few of those little small lines on this one, but they're very, very faint. Uh, but on this one, they're a little more defined. Uh, so I'm hoping, I, I, I sanded it down a little bit, hit it with the air, uh, they're still noticeable, but I'm hoping once I rehydrate the wood and give it a little bit of color back, maybe they'll disappear then. Uh, because the purpose of these things are to be put under a hot skillet or a hot pan or something like that, Using any kind of a finish that's going to uh, melt or burn or scorch or anything like that, that's not something that you want on these because this is kind of the sacrificial piece of wood to be placed under a hot skillet when it comes out of the oven or you know a pan of cornbread, a bowl or whatever. Uh, my daughter cooks with uh, cast iron a lot. Uh, if you have uh, the Famica type uh, countertops and you don't have like real granite or something like that countertops, and you set one of those things down on your countertop, it can cause some, some bad things to happen. Uh, also, if you're serving you know, hot food around Thanksgiving or the holidays or whatever, and you set it on your dining room table, you also don't want uh, that, that heat out of that pan or whatever to be on the, the finish, especially a lot of the older finishes, it'll end up leaving, that, uh, leaving a mark or changing the color of it or permanently just destroying it. So that's what these are for. These are more or less just sacrificial pieces of wood that are decorative and uh, it just insulates the table to keep it from, from scorching. And it was something I didn't think about. Like I said, when I saw her placing those on the table at the Christmas dinner, it just, it hit me. I was like, <laughs> there's another project that we can do. Uh, so what I'm gonna do for these, because I don't wanna use anything that's gonna you know, the finish is going to get destroyed on, but I do want to add something for some color. I do want to kind of protect them a little bit. So I'm going to be just using the uh, mineral oil that I use on cutting boards and stuff like that. Reason being, uh, it, it, you know, mineral oil, if you get it hot enough, yeah, it may discolor, but I think it'll be okay. Uh, once, once it sits for a little while and the mineral oil absorbs into the wood, it should just kind of serve as a little bit of protective for it and give it some color. Uh, so this is a, this is a you know this is kind of this is kind of my first set of these, so I'm gonna be giving one of them to my wife and then the other one to another family member, just to to test these guys out, see how they go, uh, see see how they see how they like them, see how they work. Of course, I will be putting them on my Facebook page and see what kind of input I get from my potential customers and my past customers. Uh, basically, I'm just giving these things a nice healthy coat of the oil, and then just wiping it in with this piece of old T-shirt here. I did sand them down uh, with 120. You could go a little slicker than that if you want, uh, and I may may wind up later. But for right now, uh, I think 120 is going to be more than 
more than adequate. This is, in case you're wondering, I, didn't, I may not have mentioned this earlier, uh, this is actually some oak wood. This is uh, what's known as water oak around here. And a lot of folks think that it's only good for firewood. And I will agree, a lot of water oaks are only good for firewood. But if you find one of those guys that's got a nice straight section down near the ground, it's not slap full of nails from where somebody has uh, nailed things to it over the years. They actually have some really nice wood once you get it dry. Uh, drying it is a uh, bit of a bit of a bit of a, a problem. Uh, it likes to split. It likes to crack, and it likes to twist on you. Uh, so when it's in the kiln, I actually have to take ratchet straps and strap it down and weight it and everything to try to keep it. You know, to minimize the amount of curl or uh, movement that you get but you still end up with some cracks but you know when that's your when your source of wood and you can get you know good looking oak like this that cheap uh, I'll I'll cut around the cracks and work around the cracks to come up with pieces of wood that I can use for projects. Alright guys there they are uh, those are gonna be my two prototypes for counter savers. I uh, went on Etsy and found that people are selling these things for like twenty five to fifty dollars so this is just a couple small pieces of wood that I had here laying around in the shop that were extra. They are kind of thick. Uh, these are one inch pieces of material. The good news is the thicker the material, if you get it hot or if you get it cold, uh, the thicker it is, the less likely it is to try to twist or, or move or anything on you. So for their intended purpose, being that these guys are made to, to have hot stuff sitting on them, I think being a little thicker is actually a good thing for this particular uh, application. So like I said guys, I was just getting ready to go back to work tomorrow. I've been really enjoying my time off during the holidays out here just cranking out some stuff, being creative, doing what I like, uh, making things, uh, trying to throw a little content together for you guys while getting through with some of my punch list of things that I've got to get done. Uh, I hope you like it. hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and uh, tune in on Sunday nights, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, myself and Steve, we have our uh, little Q&A session, just kind of a hangout. A uh, bunch of guys talking about laser stuff and gals. Uh, there, are some, there are some gals in there too. Uh, I use the term guys to mean everybody, but just for those of you that don't quite get that, uh, there will be females there as well, I'm sure. But uh, we, we just like to hang out, answer questions for you, share some information, and uh, just come up with ideas. I mean, projects, whatever. So check that out Sunday night if you don't have anything going on. I know it's going to be the first, but, uh, you know, hopefully New Year's Eve, everybody will get all their going out out of their system. And then on the night of the first, we can all just kind of chill in front of the computer and have a little conversation. But that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Tomorrow I'll be back at my Monday through Friday, and hopefully this weekend we can get some more projects done. So until next time, guys, as always, stay safe and have a good day.